So the Nationals felt pretty good coming out of Denver. Again, they could have had three of four there, but overall taking two out of four on the road, can't be too upset about that. They hope to win a series here before making their way back to D.C. Patrick Corbin on the mounds today, and tomorrow's going to be an interesting one here in Anaheim as the Angels will send Shohei Otani to the mound. That'll be must-see TV for everyone back east, I'm sure. Let's go up to the broadcast booth now, bring in Kevin Franzen, who is with me, looking good from an elevated Hi. position. I see you. I see you I down see there. I see you, Franny. Woo! Um, Franny, we were talking about this earlier today. This is a series that obviously the Nationals want to win, and we're going to be pulling for them the whole way. But at the same time, we're going to fanboy a little bit, getting to watch two of the biggest stars in Major League Baseball, Mike Trout, Shohei Otani over these three games, and we get to see Otani on the mound for the first time tomorrow. Yeah, no doubt. Look, we're baseball fans. I mean, we, we love the Nationals. We love what we do. But, I mean, at the same time, the game is what we want to see grow as well. And Otani and Trout, those are two of the – best names in the game, the best players in the game, the most exciting. I mean, look, they're, they're two of the most, well, we could easily say the greatest players possibly of all time, like in that in that conversation when it comes down to the end of it. Mike Trout's so good. Shohei Otani, he's the unicorn. And we're getting a chance to see it. And I think on the same side, you have to think about it. Like if you're the Nats players, you get to go up against these guys. Like for Patrick Corbin or Josiah Gray, Mackenzie Gore, you have a chance to go against them on the mound and then the hitters you have that chance to face Shohei. You get to do all that stuff. And there's nothing better. It brings out the best in you. It should at least. Like I always want, like I loved facing Kershaw. I knew he was going to be better than me at most times, but guess what? There's always that opportunity to beat him. And if you get that opportunity and you take advantage of it, you got stories for a lifetime. Yeah, we saw Shohei Otani with a big swing last year in this ballpark that helped the Angels win a come from behind game. But he will face the Nationals on the mound for the first time tomorrow. And, yeah, it's going to be fun to watch, and we certainly hope the Nationals pounce on him. But uh, we're going to enjoy that ball game <laughs> for sure. Franny, it's not often that a guy signs for $200-plus million, and he's maybe the third, fourth biggest star right. on a roster. That's the case with Anthony Rendon. You know, you played with Anthony. I covered him for a number of years in D.C. He's beloved in our nation's capital. Nationals fans will always remember what he did in 2019. Those numbers in that contract year in the regular season were enormous. And then what he did in the postseason. I know you weren't covering the Nets oh, during that 2019 all. year, but you were watching from afar and appreciating what he did. Uh, everything. Because, I mean, you love the person. You love the person that he is and, and who he is as a teammate is number one. It stands out more than anything. Uh, that year from afar and watching it, like you get, like it was the fist pumps underneath every time that you'd be covering him, right? Or, or, or calling a game with him. Because you just know what he, you just know what he's about. You know what he's, the money thing is a result of him being great, right? At the end of the day, he wished that he could be like the lowest paid guy in everybody's mind. You know, no one looked at him as a star. He just would love to just be unassuming. It just, you know, happens to be that he rakes and he makes a lot of money that way. But the way I look at Tone, it, it, it sucks when guys get hurt and they don't get this, you don't get to see their potential because everyone else around here, that's how they judge him. Right, the nation's capital of D.C., what do they see? They, they know the world champion. They know a guy that rakes, the guy that has had an incredible career as a national. And it, it's, it's hard to see it that way. So, you know, you hope when we leave here, that's when he goes off. You know, I, I would say that. Right. But, I mean, at the same time, you just hope he has a healthy year. Yeah, it's, it's really confounding, Franny, when we saw what Anthony did in D.C. And, yes, injuries have played a part in his last few years here in Anaheim. He had the hip stuff. He had the wrist stuff. And that's caused him to miss right. some time. Even when he's been on the field, he hasn't been the same guy that he was in D.C. Today will actually be his 162nd game in an Angels uniform, despite the fact that he signed with that team before the 2020 season. So, yeah, I'm sure he hasn't felt great even when he's played at various stretches, but his production here in L.A. on the field has not matched what he did back in D.C. No, and again, it's if you're healthy and you're, you're out there and, and you're going to be, I mean, he's per, like, think about this is how good he is. It's protecting Shohei and Mike Trout, right? Like, that's the way you look. Who's the who's the four hitter? Who's the guy behind? Oh, it's Anthony Rendon. Why? Because he's great. He's a great hitter. And especially when, when he's healthy, I think what we always, I, I, I mean, at least for me, I don't forget about how good he is defensively. So we, we forget about what the loss is yeah. on the field with him uh, when he's not healthy, right? I mean, it changes the whole, you know, complexion of the infield for, for teams. He's so athletic. He does so many, you know, things well. And the other part? We always talk about this. Like, the analytic people are saying the RBI doesn't matter. That guy hunts. That guy hunts RBIs. Yeah. And that's a 
good thing for this game. And, and so, again, you hope it, it, it happens when he, we're gone, but we all know. We kind of have like a little bit of that little fist pump here and there. We almost got out of here last year without him doing too much damage, right. and then he walked the Nationals off in that series finale uh, when you and I were calling that game. So, Frenny, let's talk about this Nationals team and a guy that had a great series in a couple games in Denver, uh, Stone Garrett, and he nearly came a click off his bat from giving the Nationals a lead in the ninth inning yesterday with a go-ahead two-run homer. But you see there his numbers. Three games for him, had that monster four-hit game with a homer a couple days ago. This is a guy that, when he's locked in, can really do some big things. Yeah, he's going to make a lot of a lot of mistakes as far as for the pitchers go out of the yard, right? I mean, he's, he's that strong. And, like, yesterday, I remember, like, just missing things and just being, like, you know, short left field. And, like, he just missed it. And it's almost to the track, and you're like, yeah. Oh, when you look like that, that's, that's, that's what happens, that's right? That's fun. Yeah. But what we got to see is we got to see him swing at strikes, and everyone's gonna say, oh, that's such a cliche thing to do. It's like, well, no, it's on. It's it is. It might be cliche, but guess what? It's a hard thing to do. His biggest thing is chase, right? He chases off the plate on spin, and doesn't get the elevation that much. But when he was in the strike zone, all during the weekend, the balls are flying everywhere yeah and that's a great thing so for him it's just getting over the plate and and letting his true ability his strength his physicality come to play because if it's off the plate and it you know it, and it's a ball and he's swinging at it guess what you're not going to do a whole lot with it but when you bring him closer to you and you get those pitches to hit and you don't miss them or you just just miss them yeah some of those just misses from him will go out which is kind of actually scary yeah, it's not altogether <laughs> different from what we hear with Victor Robles and Luis Garcia and K. Barrett Ruiz. A lot of these young hitters for the Nationals get the ball in the strike zone, right. swing at good pitches, and good things will happen. Uh, so, Freddie, let's go to the starting pitchers now that will take the ball in game one of this three-game series. A couple guys that have not gotten off to great starts to the season, but Patrick Corbin, kind of the same as it was in stretches last year for the Nationals left-hander, has really not gotten a whole lot of luck through his first two starts. What if anything, do you think Patrick needs to do differently to try and get back on track in terms of the numbers? Well, I think ultimately it comes down to he's got to be able to pitch in and he's got to pitch in effectively. The ends can't be on the plate. The in has to be on the corner or off the plate in, right? He has to make everything look like a strike. We saw well, I, the biggest thing for me this year already is, yeah, the slider might not be the same sharpness, but we've seen a lot more indecisiveness by the hitters. There's a lot more like... If you're a hitter, you're thinking, yes, 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 no. Last year at times with that slider was, yes, yes, no, 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 right? It was ball out of hand. Right now, we're getting a lot of like the yes, 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 uh, no. You know what I mean? I want that, and I've seen that. We've seen that consistently. That's a great thing to have. And so it's just the production part is going to come when he locates well, because he does right now. He has to, If he locates in off the plate, it's going to be okay day. Franny, thank you. We'll Dan, hear from you and Bob in a bit. Dan, tell everybody about your birdie. Just let everyone know. I had I had a birdie today. It was All nice. Right. Way to go. That's about it. Nice. Thank you, Franny.